Hey boys and girls, we are together um, getting ready for our history test that's coming up on Thursday of this week. So I thought it would be a good idea if we filled in our history study guide together. This study guide is already located on the back of your history packet that you have, so you just need to open up and find where it says Using Maps Unit Test Review. So we're going to fill this in together. And I'm not gonna show anything but the study guide here so that you're able to copy in as, um, as we discuss it. So let's just go ahead and jump in. You have your book nearby and you're always welcome to use your book. You can always pause the video and finish writing things in as we go, but um, this is just a good way to try and get it written in and to discuss some things together. So here we go. All right, what is a map? Well, if you go all the way back, you can do a couple of things and look either in the glossary of your book right here, where it gives you the definition of a map, um, or you can go back to the first chapter. A map is a drawing of a real place. Now, if you know cursive, you should be writing cursive. Um, if you are not familiar with cursive, then you may write in print. So um, the thing I'd like to add here on this second line is that you may need several maps because the scale is different. If you remember when we were looking at a couple of different maps into the city, and then once you get into the city, you need a different set of, a different map to see um, the street names and the, the actual location of a place. So you may need different are several maps. Because the scale is different. The line doesn't go all the way across. Okay. Number two. Draw a compass rose, and then what is the purpose of a compass rose? You don't have to have a very fancy compass rose, but a compass rose is that part of the map that tells you north, south, east, and west. And then sometimes you'll see these maps that'll say northeast or um, uh, southeast, things like that, southwest, or Northwest, okay, this inside part's not as important as the north, south, east, and west. And the reason why that we have this is to tell us to tell us in which direction to travel. So it's gonna tell us which direction to travel. Number three, is a map key important when looking at a map? Why or why not? Now here's what I'd have to say about that. If it was not important, then it probably wouldn't be on the map, would it? So yes, a map key is important. A map key is important because it will contain different information that will help you understand the map. So it helps you understand it. I'm just making that shake. So yes, a map key is important because it will help, it contains different information that helps you understand it. So a map scale is that part of a map that looks like a ruler. Looks like a ruler. You'll see it down on a map. Um, let me see if I can find a quick example. Okay, right here on this map, you can see this right here. This is your map scale. It's got the distance and it's got a, um, like miles or, different things like that, that's one of them. Um, so they're, they're helping you to understand uh, 
um, uh, how long it might take to get somewhere. So it's going to be important and it looks a little bit like a ruler. There's another one right here, map scale. Okay. If one inch on a map scale equals two miles in real life, then five inches on a map scale would equal blank miles. Well, one inch um, would equal uh, two miles. So then if you have five inches, well, you've got to say two times five, that gives us 10 miles. Number five, which lines run, important word, run east to west? Okay, so I'm gonna make a little note. Run, I'm gonna circle that, make a little bubble around it. The ones that run east to west are called latitude. Another name for latitude is parallels. Remember, latitude is the only one that can be called a parallel because longitude lines actually will meet. They'll intersect. Latitude lines never meet. They never intersect. They're always running east to west of each other. How many degrees are there north of the equator? Well, once you see on a globe, okay, if you have your equator here, the degrees for this half up here um, is 90 degrees. Okay, and then there are, if they're 90 degrees above the equator, on to the north of the equator, then there are also 90 degrees to the south of the equator. Okay, the name of zero degrees latitude, that's our equator. Latitude. Okay. Which lines run, okay, another north to south? Those are the ones that are going up and down like this. Okay, if they're going up and down, these are our longitude lines, which are also called meridians. Which line runs through Greenwich, England? That's the prime meridian. That's the zero degrees meridian. All right, what is the name of the 100 degrees longitude line? That's on the opposite side of the world and this is the one that runs through, um, mostly it goes through the um, the uh, seas, okay, and it goes through the sea. I'm sorry, I'm moving my camera a little bit. It goes through the, the water so that it's not running through the land and it doesn't mess up on the calendar. That's our international date line. Okay, so that is zero degrees, or sorry, not zero, it's 180 degrees longitude, okay? Zero degrees longitude is the prime meridian, 180 degrees longitude is the international date line, but remember only one latitude line is zero degrees, and that's the equator, okay? Turn the page. All right, number seven. Number seven says, where would 40 degrees north be in relation to the equator? Well, that N right there tells us that we are north of the equator. There's not a line there, so you can just write it in. Because it says 40 degrees in, that means it's north of the equator. Using latitude, where is the United States of America. All right, the United States of America, if you were to look on a map, let's see if I have one here. Okay, all right, so here is this map right here. If you can see, eh, let me see if I can 
scooch this out just a little. Okay, you see North America there? It is going to fit within the about 25 degrees north to about 50 degrees north. So that's where it's at on this map. So we're gonna fill in. It is located about 25 degrees north to 50 degrees north. And remember this little symbol right here is another symbol it, that means degree. Okay, it means degree. What would you be wearing in the United States in January, especially um, the further away from the equator you get? In January, we know that to be winter. So you're gonna be wearing winter clothes. You're not gonna be wearing a bathing suit. I mean, unless maybe you're in the Florida Keys or something, but for the most part, you're gonna be wearing your winter clothes. The further you get away from the equator, the colder it gets. Let's put that note in. The further you get from the equator, the colder it gets. Okay. If you and your friends traveled south on different lines of longitude, would you ever meet? Remember, lines of longitude. So if you are on a line of longitude and you are traveling south and you are on one line of that longitude line and you're traveling this way and your friend is on another line of that longitude and they're traveling this way, would you ever meet? Yes. Yes, you would. Um, you uh, would meet eventually down here at the North Pole. It would eventually meet down at the North Pole, okay? Because your lines of uh, longitude are not parallel. They're not parallel, they do intersect. And since they are not parallel, um, you would intersect or you would meet at the North Pole. If you're traveling on lines of latitude, however, would you ever meet? No, because those are called parallel. Parallel lines do not intersect. And so latitude lines will never intersect. How many minutes are there between each degree line? There are 60. Remember we talked about 60 um, because it was kind of like minutes of time, um, 60 seconds. Um, in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour and so forth. So we could remember that. So if you were to see something that said 41 degrees, um, 38, this little symbol right here, this little symbol right here is the symbol for minutes. Okay, what are coordinates? Coordinates are a set of numbers like you have, um, so that means you would have two numbers, like you would have um, like a pair of socks, you have two socks. A coordinate is a set of numbers that identify a specific place. They identify a specific place on a map. Up through here, all of this up through here is chapters one through three. Just in case you wanna know that, just all of those up to that point are all part of chapters one through three. International date line, that is um, an imaginary line. It's important to know that it's an imaginary line because there's not a real line that you would cross and say, oh, there it is, I see it. It's an imaginary line that changes the date it changes the date to a day earlier or sorry later, depending on which direction you're traveling.
okay? So it's an imaginary line that changes the date to a day earlier or later, depending on which direction you are traveling. And we remember this because we had a explorer by the name of Ferdinand Magellan. Okay, remember he was um, traveling and when they got finished with their travels, they realized that it didn't really match up to their records. And that was because they didn't take into account that, um, that the date changed, the day changed. So a person will cross this international date line when they travel, um, when they travel from the east to the western hemisphere. Okay, specifically, a person will cross that international date line when they travel from the east to the western hemisphere. Um, okay, next one. Texas is in which time zone? We are in the central time zone. We're in the central time zone. If we travel to the eastern time zone, we would set our clocks forward an hour. Okay, so if we were, we're in the central time zone, if we traveled from Texas into Georgia, like Miss Wood showed you on the map, then that means um, I would set my clock um, an hour ahead. Let me move this up just a tad because I keep bumping it. Maybe, let's see, there we go, does that work? Not necessarily, please don't drop. Okay, maybe I shouldn't mess with it. Okay, so we would move forward one hour. Um, if we were, that was if I go from Texas into Georgia, okay? If I traveled into the Western, to the Western time zone, it's not really Western time zone, that's called mountain time zone, that might be a, a misprint. To the mountain time zone, we would set our clocks back one hour. So if we went from Texas into say Colorado, we would lose an hour. How many time zones are there? Well, this one's kind of tricky. We're gonna, we're gonna put both. If we looked at the world, okay, so let's start with that. In the world, there are 24 total time zones. But if we look within the United States, there are four on the mainland, but then six if you include Hawaii and Alaska. So four on the mainland, but six if you include Alaska and Hawaii. What kind of map shows natural features of the land? Natural features meaning like mountains, valleys, etc. Okay, that would be a physical map. We just talked about that recently. Elevation is how high the land is. Talk about elevation when you refer to like mountains. Um, and so we look at the elevation of certain mountains by noticing how high the mountains are. You can tell the different elevations by different ways. You can use different colors. Okay, mostly by using different colors. Sometimes they can use lines on them and different things like that, but mostly by using different colors. Number 17, what does a physical map show? We've already mentioned that, but it, uses, it shows us mountains, the physical land features. Mountains, maybe sometimes just hills, valleys, etc. Sometimes it'll show uh, different bodies of water. What might you use when might you use an elevation map? 
Well, if you're climbing or hiking across areas with mountains, you would need that to know which path to take. So mainly when climbing or hiking, the areas that have mountains. Remember in the last chapter that we read together in chapter five, we talked about um, you would have to know whether or not, especially on this map right here, we looked at this. Um, do you wanna climb up a hill and then hike down a hill? Or do you wanna follow the level trail to get to where you're going? It might be further distance, but it's not gonna require as much um, effort. So that's when you would use this physical map is to know um, kind of which direction or which path you wanna take to a certain place. Okay guys, so your study guide is filled in. Um, you are studying this to prepare for your history test that will be on uh, Thursday of this week. So get it all filled in. You wanna make sure that this is filled in because this is something that we will look at when we collect your packet from you when you return. Um, we will check it and make sure that it has been filled in. If I'm taking the time to fill this thing in, you should take the time to fill this in. So make sure that it's filled in and that it is neatly filled in and that it can be read. There's no point in writing something in on a study guide if you cannot read it, okay? So good job today, guys. Make sure you study and prepare for your test. And until next time, we'll see you soon.